We turn now to the presidential campaign as the candidates turn their attention to next week's big Super Tuesday contests. Mitt Romney beat Rick Santorum by just three points in Michigan last night, but that didn't stop him from his victory lap. We didn't win by a lot, but we won by enough, and that's all that counts. Even that narrow win over a stiff Santorum challenge proved enough to head off what could have been an embarrassing loss for Romney in his home state. A clear-cut win in Arizona awarded Romney 29 delegates. And Michigan officials said the close finish there would split the count in half. After With 10 states voting on years, Super Tuesday on next takes, week, Romney make, today moved on to the next big potential you, prize, the Ohio. Question, the reason I won yesterday in Michigan and Arizona was because I'm talking about the issue people care most about and because I understand that issue personally. And that's the economy and job creation balancing budgets. The, the skill of creating more jobs with less debt and smaller government is something I understand. When the media asked people coming out of the polls yesterday why they voted for me, what their interests were, those people who cared about the economy and jobs voted for me. Santorum took his campaign to another Super Tuesday state, Tennessee. His strong Michigan showing, he said, put wind at his back. We went out there with a positive, hopeful message. A message about jobs, a message about energy, a message about faith and family and the importance of that as foundational institutions of our country. And you know what? The people of Michigan across the board, across the board, responded to that. Newt Gingrich and Ron Paul did not contest Michigan or Arizona. For Gingrich, the path to revival runs through the South. He spent today in Georgia, the state he represented in Congress. We need to stand up and we need to win this. And I think the way we win it is we draw very broad distinctions. So if you help me next Tuesday, and next Tuesday is very important, Georgia is the biggest state in delegates on Super Tuesday. So we have a real chance here to send a signal to the country, but we need your help to do it. And Paul spent last night in Virginia, where only he and Romney qualified for the ballot. We're still winning a lot of delegates, and that's what counts. 419 delegates will be up for grabs next Tuesday. To clinch the nomination, the Republican Party's eventual nominee has to collect 1,144 delegates. So far, no one is even close. As of last night, Mitt Romney leads with 135. Newt Gingrich has 32. Rick Santorum has 19, and Texas Congressman Ron Paul has eight. Another 126 delegates are not bound to any one candidate. For a closer look at the contest ahead and what's at stake, we're joined by Josh Putnam, political science professor at North Carolina's Davidson University. He runs the political blog Front Loading HQ, and those are his delegate estimates. And news our political editor, Christina Bellantoni. Christina, after last night, after seeing what Romney did in Arizona and in Michigan, is it safe to call him the front runner again? I think so, yeah. And particularly when you look at the math, it is very difficult for any of these other candidates to really forge a path forward because he can collect in this you know, sort of slow build toward having that magic number, even though it could take months and months. But winning delegates doesn't, winning elections, as he did yesterday, doesn't necessarily equal winning delegates. There's a disconnect there somewhere. Yeah, there is. And I think that's what Super Tuesday is really going to take a look at that. It's how many states, what types of states is he able to win? Can he win in Ohio, which is a very similar electorate to Michigan, which he was able to pull out this very small win? Or is he able to win any of these southern states? Will he even really compete in the southern states? What sort of point is he trying to prove about his strategy over the next week? Josh Putnam, down there in North Carolina, you keep track of this a lot. So tell us what, how you add up your numbers, how you keep track of which states award date delegates when and how, and what difference it makes at this stage. Well, obviously, we're very early in the process right now. Um, we're, we've been stuck in between this kind of momentum sort of contest and, and one where we're counting delegates. And it's, it's becoming more and more clear that we're at the, on the latter half of that, uh, focusing on, on those delegates. Um, so there, without getting too far down in, into the weeds here, we've, we've got a few different ways that we can look at delegates. One, uh, we're looking at the ones that are bound um, according to the rules, the state party rules in each individual state. And that's more defined in, in primary states, like what we saw last night out of, out of Michigan and Arizona. It's more clearly defined than what we're seeing in, in caucus states, where the rules are, are, are less defined um, and, and uh, you know, where, where the discrepancy in some of these counts lie right now, mine versus others. Um, 
And added on to this is something similar to what we saw in, in 2008 on the Democratic side, the discussion about superdelegates. Um, of course, on the Republican side, they're referred to as, as automatic delegates. There are only three um, in each state. Most of those three per state are unbound, um, free to choose whichever candidate they want to. In some states, they're, they're bound according to state party rules. Well, give me, uh, here, for example, last night in Michigan, it was clear by the end of the evening anyway that Mitt Romney had won, but it wasn't clear until almost the end of the day today how many delegates he had won, which this, I guess we're now hearing 15 delegates for him, 15 delegates for Santorum. Was that because they, they are apportioned a, a by congressional district? Yeah, so, uh, you know, again, something that differs in the Republican Party versus the Democratic Party is that we, we don't have a, a, a flat or, or uniform proportionality across all states. On the Republican side, that's something they've traditionally left up to the state parties to decide how they want to allocate these delegates. And, and in Michigan last night, what we saw was some of them were allocated um, via the, the congressional uh, district vote, and that was a, a winner-take-all allocation, two per district. And then the remaining two delegates that they had out of their uh, penalized 30 um, were uh, proportional, that, mm -hmm. that uh, Mitt Romney got one and, and Rick Santorum got the other. And, and that's what we see in, in several other states. Christina, we heard Mitt uh, Gingrich say today, Georgia, if you give me your votes, I'll have the most delegates in Super Tuesday. We saw Ron Paul say, hey, we're still <laughs> counting delegates. We are assuming that that's how these candidates are now plotting their decision, their strategy about where to go. That's exactly what they're doing. And the Gingrich folks particularly have a lot riding on Georgia. They think he'll do well in the South. They think that, that he can win over these conservative voters. They've compared it a lot to South Carolina, which was his last real victory, his only victory. And they basically see that if he can take a big number in Georgia, he might even do winner take all and have a huge delegate prize there. The Santorum people say that they feel confident in Georgia. They think that they can keep him under that 50 percent, Gingrich, and t get a bunch of delegates there. Then they're looking at Tennessee and Oklahoma. These states, they really think that they can amass delegates, and they also are all contesting these caucuses. So we saw Santorum today in Tennessee. We saw Romney today in Ohio. We saw, we saw uh, Ron Paul last night in Virginia, and we saw Newt Gingrich in Georgia. Are those basically the four states that we're watching for the next week? Yeah, Ohio is really sort of the biggest test, and the Gingrich and Paul people are calling it a, a Mitt Rick rematch of Michigan, but it's a very important state. It's obviously a battleground state in the general election. It's a state that's sort of equivalent for Santorum to what Romney's Michigan was. It's close to Pennsylvania. It's a lot of the voters that should go with him. He's got a big lead there. What's going to happen? But these other states sort of in the middle are where some of them are going to be contesting. But I'd really watch Tennessee and Georgia then Oklahoma is the other big prize. Josh Putnam, almost since this campaign began, we started racing to the end. When would it end? And what we don't know now is how long it will take to get to that 1144 number. What's, what's your estimate? Well, I'd say it's probably about 515 on May 15th. Uh, I mean, there's, 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 there's no real good answer to that. Given the fact that we've got a much different calendar in 2012 relative to what we saw in 2008, that we've got a much more evenly dispersed calendar in terms of the contests, this is likely to play out until at, at least April, if, if not beyond then. Be because you're saying, because it, picking up on what Christina said, the states that these candidates are focusing on don't necessarily d d deliver delegates that gets them, that get, allows them to sew things up? Well, again, it gets back to what Christina said at the, the beginning of, of the discussion here, is that, that what we're looking at is just a very slow, incremental build of, of delegates across this, this contest. And if, if the way the delegates have been allocated thus far projects onto the rest of the contest, Mitt Romney ever so gradually adds to that total uh, from, from week to week, but it, it takes us a while to get to that, that uh, 1144 that's necessary to wrap up the nomination. And Christina, if, if today we just watching the way the campaign unfolded post-Michigan, post-Arizona, we saw that Mitt Romney is not at all let up on Rick Santorum. Right. He still landed on him with all feet today. And then we heard this late this afternoon that Rick Santorum won, raised $9 million this month. So this, this fight is just beginning. It really is. And that's where Romney's resources do allow him to just touch on all of these Super Tuesday states. You know, we're going to see results from 10 states next week. So he might do some fly arounds. He might do ads in those. But Santorum having the money to compete and then coupled with a super PAC that has, you know, millionaire behind it, two millionaires behind it that's helping him, he might be able to keep even with, with Romney in these states. And so that's where the money really
really does matter. And Gingrich, we should always point out, wouldn't even be in this race if it weren't for his super PAC really still able to keep him in financially. I've been on those fly rounds. They are no fun at all. Christina Bellantoni, Josh Putnam, thank you both very much.